The Tudor Pelagos 39 is a very enticing, exciting, yet infuriating release from Tudor. And let's unpack the reasoning here. But we have a 39 millimeter Pelago, so it is scaled down, nice and trim and overall profile, a nice short lug to lug dimension, very adjustable with the T-fit clasp. We have a full loomed bezel insert that is now radially brushed in ceramic. So there is some more visual interest. We have a sunray dial. We have more blocky, uh, full loomed markers, applied markers. We have the red line of text. We have the snowflake hands. We have the additional rubber strap. We have almost everything that we could ask for in a diver from Tudor, and it comes in at a non-exclusionary price of $4,400 full retail, just about a full grand less at retail than a very value-rich and respected Omega Seamaster Professional 300. So understandably, this is very enticing. This is very exciting. And I can get those of you that want to go out and buy it right away, put it on wrist, start enjoying it because Tudor has given you what you've been asking for. But here's the problem. Because there is so much demand, I'm hearing some authorized dealers around the country, they're getting well over 200 people asking for that specific model to where are they going to get 200 models by the time the end of the year rolls around? No. And other authorized dealers that might not be as large, they're still getting three dozen, four dozen individuals calling, coming into the store, sending emails and messages saying, hey, when you have one, I'm ready to go. I would like to buy the Pelagos 39 millimeter. So that's yeah, very promising from a business standpoint for the authorized dealer. But here's where it gets a little bit infuriating. I'm hearing, guys, that this Pelagos 39 is not going to be like some Tudor models to where there is relatively good supply for the demand. It's going to be more like the Black Bay Chrono Panda to where there is a lot more demand than there is supply for this particular model, which creates an artificial demand. And it creates uh, a lot of angst and stress and anger and salt within our watch enthusiast community. And I can understand that. Tudor has finally given us exactly what we're looking for, and they're not pumping them out as fast as they can. They're not working hard to meet every demand for this particular model. They are quote unquote, playing games and trying to perpetuate the interest, the hype, because of the way they supply the model. I'm hearing that some ADs might just get a handful by the time the end of the year rolls around. And we are just entering the frenzy, the hype, right? This is fall. This is when people are wanting to spend money right before the holidays. They're ready to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a watch. And is everybody that wants a Pelagos 39 going to be able to buy one by the time the end of the year rolls around? Probably not. And if this watch becomes more like this Panda Chrono, you could be waiting a year and a half, two years. I think some of you watching right now, you might have you might have uh, told your AD that you're ready to buy one when they can sell you one and you still haven't gotten the call, you know, however many uh, months later it's been since this one was released. So I can get the frustration. I can get those of you that are thinking that this is just a strategy on Tudor's part, that they are trying to employ the same types of strategy that Rolex has supposedly employed to perpetuate interest and generate hype and drive up sales of some of their other models. Are you in this situation to where, hey, you asked for that Black Bay Chrono, or you're asking for this Pelagos 39, and maybe six months have gone by, or eight months have gone by, and the AD calls you and say, hey, we, we want to sell you as soon as we can. We haven't got your watch in yet, but we do have the new Ranger. Do you want the new Ranger? I think some of us will go, okay, well, I do like the Ranger. It's not my first choice, but let me buy it. And then I'll also buy the watch I originally wanted whenever I'm able to buy one from this authorized dealer. And suddenly this brand has made two sales as opposed to one sale. And maybe some of those watch enthusiasts are going, okay, well, I'll buy this. I'll buy this Ranger now. Maybe I'll buy some jewelry for my wife or for my girlfriend or my significant other. And that might put me ahead of six or eight other people that are wanting the same watch that I'm wanting that there obviously isn't enough supply for. So it just creates this 
<sighs> not ideal situation that I know a lot of you are completely over. So this, this watch, yes, is exciting. This Pelagos 39 looks near perfect to me, but is everybody that wants this going to be able to buy one? And if there is gamesmanship with trying to get one at an authorized dealer at full retail price, will that turn you away from the brand? I know Tudor has traditionally been the hard working individual's brand to where you can walk into that authorized dealer, you can put hard earned money down and come out with the watch of your choosing and enjoy that great sports piece for years and years. It's not supposed to be an exclusionary luxury type of brand, but are they moving with some of their models in that direction? It appears that that's the case. So please, in the comments, let me know what your experience has been. Have you been able to buy the new Pelagos 39? Have you been quoted a specific time? And what time are you comfortable sharing in the comment section? Or have you been given the classic Rolex runaround? I'm interested to hear where you are and what opinions you have, what experiences you have to share. Thank you for watching. Let me know if you have questions. I'll see you next time.